So hi, um, yeah, my name is Renzen Cruz. So I came from Philippines, and um, I'll be discussing about forensic dating Windows artifacts. So investigation without event logs. So okay, get into it. Probably my who am I? So like seven years working experience. So yeah, I came from Philippines and now working in Qatar, from Middle East. Um, I'm working as a senior security analyst and part of a nation state team there. Um, core member of cybersecurity, which is a training center in Philippines as well. And then I'm a former college instructor and some alphabets that sometimes doesn't make sense. Sometimes. Yeah. So we're going to discuss some Windows artifacts that's, that are kind of important from forensics perspective. Um, it's not everything that I put here because there's also some files that we need like there's a forensic value of it but I didn't put it because I have a limited time like user assist, recycle beans, etc. So I just pick up uh, the most files that I've been using when it comes to investigating or analysis, anal analyzing some case or incidents. So it could be the LNK files, prefetch, time cache, so shell bags and register keys. So it's not just for the blue teamers out there, but also, oops, but also it is also um, essential to the pen testers because they just normally delete the Windows event lags that we normally know. But the fact is there's, there's more to life than Windows event lags. So we can also um, perform a timeline analysis and conduct some reports by not using the Windows event lags but just using the Windows artifacts. So, yeah. So, have you, have you ever feel like in the morning, sitting down on the sock room and then like zipping a cup of coffee and then there's like a Windows machine that you need to be forensicate and there's no event lags that is there? That's like the best feeling ever, right? So, yeah, so if you're a professional hacker, you, you just probably like trying to get the next big haste. And then that could be like one thing you can do is to just remove everything, like remove the artifacts that you're there to become more stealthy. So in the physical world, it's like of the CCTV camera footage, some hairs, um, footprints, um, blood, camera, whatever. And the digital world, it's more like it all boils down to the logs itself. So Windows is really a fan of logs. It keeps on getting different logs, even a PowerShell, um, different applications now, especially the Windows 8 above. So yeah, it's, it's kind of mind blow for the SOC analyst to generate or to analyze every log that is there. So yeah, it's going to be a big case. So yeah, Windows artifacts. So let's just start with the LNK files. LNK files is like more of a shortcut thing. So it's basically, um, we, we use this as to get the metadata of it because there could be a like, uh, there could be a lot of forensic value of it. So for example, there's like, um, a USB or network share that has been removed to the machine, but you need to get that files or if that existing on that environment or on that Windows machine. So you can just get that on the LNK files. So its location will be here. User profile update or roaming Microsoft Windows and recent. So you can just get those LNK files and then get the metadata of it by using some tools that I'll be showing you later. It's not hands-on because you know I'm, I have a limited time. So I'll just take some screenshots of it and then make use of it. So I tried um, getting some screenshots of it on my machine. So as you can see, I just do a DIR in, in the Windows environment and then get everything here. So some of the files here was deleted already on my machines, but still there. So the forensic value of LNK files are really great. So yeah, um, one of the tools that I've been using was from um, Eric Zimmerman, if, if, if you're a forensic guy or like in the security world, you probably know who's Eric Zimmerman is. So he, he created a lot of tools, uh, mainly for the forensics. So I did, um, a quick rundown of this tool, uh, by using that command. So as you can see on the argument there that there's this dash dash CSV. So you can just import that, uh, file into CSV and the result will be the file name. 
So as you can see there, oops. Okay. As you can see there that there's a lot of timestamps there that could be essential or very beneficial for the forensics analysis, the target created and whatever. So I've like, I've highlighted some of the suspicious things like we can, we can say that if ever I am I'm just a marketing guy that doesn't really uh, into tech, why does I need to have ex exploitation with Ruby there? Why does, why, why do I need to have a download file that's like APT 43 leak? So it's kind of like interesting stuff there, right? So next one would be the prefetch file. So probably most of you guys know this thing. So, um, Windows created this um, files just to um, to to uh, when you're uh, when you're running an applications, then there could be a cache on that. So probably in the second time that you run that applications, it will be more smooth and more fast. And every time you load an applications, so you can just check that prefetch files on this location. And we can also use this um, when it comes to uh, investigating something. So for example, um, there's um, a file or application that has been deleted already, and we can use prefetch files as, as an evidence that this malicious um, executable or binary has been run on that machine, even if it was deleted. So yeah, I use the win prefetch view as a tool. Um, so we can just Google it. And also there's uh, a tool from Eric Zimmerman as well for prefetch viewer. So I cited a few examples here that kind of interesting. So let's say that, yeah, I'm a marketing guy. Why do I need like BitTorrent or FTK imagery there? Even if I deleted that one. So looks, looks kind of interesting for me. RR.exe is a Ridge Reaper, which can be used to extract um, the account management, some, some hive. Um, Wireshark, why do I need Wireshark? And WinHex or Ada Pro. So it could be really um, beneficial and very helpful if we're conducting investigations and stuff. Time cache. So there's like a funny thing about time cache. So when I did some CTF way back um, in some online resources, so there's an easy level there uh, on the forensics category and then I kept on banging my head for like an hour. I guess I can't find the, uh, um, what you call these, the flag. And then I just found out that it's on the times that DB. So I just need to use a tool. And then it was just there. You just have to use that tool. So yeah, if, if you, if you look at this times that DB, you're kind of familiar on that, um, icon. So if you try to make a fil film, a uh, thumbnail view on, on different pictures in the Windows environment, it creates a file that known as thumbs.db, and then you can really extract that metadata, even if those pictures have been deleted on your machine. So it can be used by the law enforcement, incident responders, and forensicators, um, especially if you're working on the child pornography. Um, if, if that guy said that he doesn't even have any child pornography pictures on his machine, but if you know or you, you see that there's a times that DB there, you can um, eventually prove that there's like some suspicious photos there. Okay, but it's not really a, a big picture, but it's just a thumbnail view, but it could be great for your forensic report. So yeah, so it's all located here on this um, location. So I put um, those locations here because I think it will be helpful for us, like on the blue teaming side, SOC, uh, forensics, or in this incident responder to make use of these locations. So I got an ex example here. So you probably know this logo. So this is a Tor browser. So I use a time cache viewer on my machine and then Wireshark. So um, on my first part of my talk, I said that let's assume that I'm a marketing guy. So, um, you can, or we can assume that why, why the hell this marketing guy has a Tor browser on his machine or even a Wireshark. So you can just prove that by just getting this thumbnail view of his machine. And then, uh, a shell bag. So, um, I, I, I've watched a lot of thoughts about shell bags. So, um, it's, it's really, um, it's really a complicated artifacts that you can really use 
uh, for your report or for if you're investigating something. So, for example, if you're managing or trying to um, access different files, network shares via Windows Explorer or even um, USB um, or if you change some controls on the control panels, you can just probably track that out using the shell bags. So, yeah, you can use a tool uh, by, of course, Eric Zimmerman as well. So there's a fine, good tool there for shell bags that you can track down those activities that I will show to you later. Um, yeah, um, this is one example of that. So from here, from the desktop, the user tried to have a file in the downloads folder, sys internal suit, and some all debug. And uh, there you go, there's like a fake point there. Even if it was deleted, if you try to extract the user class that that, and then get into the shellback explorer, you can still see there that there's a fake point folder there. So yeah, you can make an evidence out of it and make a context of it. Um, you can see here also that a user tried to configure Windows firewall power options and systems recovery. So if you're a marketing guy, why, why would you just tweak those configuration or options on the, on your machine? So probably something is going on there. All right, so jump list is, well, technically it's just like the frequent, if you notice in the Windows environment, like there's a frequent um, features there that if you use some of applications that you currently, or mostly recently applications that you used, you can just spin that out uh, on the frequent or on the recent tab or features in Windows environment. So there's also a file that generates on that one that you can try to look on this file location. So you may track down, uh, if you're investigating an image or a machine, you can just check what are those applications that commonly run by a user or by, by your suspect by using the jump list artifacts. So every jump list or every application has its own application ID. So it's too many to mention, but I just have this uh, browser um, applications here. It looks like an MD5 hash, but it's not. So yeah, if you wanted to have a full list, you can just go on this link and then try to figure out what are the application IDs depending on the application. So all right, so I tried to get the jump list on my machine as well by just doing DIR. So yeah, it looks like this one. Okay, so I use a jump list explorer by, again, Eric Zimmerman, which is a great guy. So on this part, I tried to extract more of them. There's more sense of doing this because uh, a marketing guy that tried to um, explore a website that is dealing with some hacking stuff then you may just find out like, okay, so he tried to go to messageplate.com or even a Kali.org for what? If you're a marketing guy, are you going to just download it on your machine and make fun of it? So it makes a lot of sense to make this as an evidence as well on your report. Um, Windows registry. So we're all familiar with Windows registry and it's kind of mind blowing that there's a lot of information that we can get on the Windows registry side. So yeah, there could be different hives there, HKZR. Um, it's uh, mainly used for uh, configuration information of the application side. Um, HKCU, it's actually the profile that is currently logged on. Um, what else? HKLM, it's more of the software um, as well as the hardware part of the thing. So you can get a lot of information there, um, which is an HKU, it's Actually, uh, it contains information of all the loaded users within that machine. And then the last would be the HKCC. It contains a lot of information about the hardware during the startup. So basically, a lot of information was there. And one of the favorite um, artifacts that a forensicator must have. So yeah, there's these are the forensic value of it. So that's like what I've discussed. Any devices mounted, it can also be tracked down. So for every USB devices or even a network shares, you can also check that one using a registry explorer or you can just check the registries. Um, 
I've cited some of my favorite um, links on the registry explorer or in the registry keys. So you may just try to look at this one, um, particularly uh, on the start run. You may check what are the applications that has been run during the startup, type URLs, what are the type, what are the URLs that have been used by the user, um, all installed programs, and as well as the mounted drivers. Um, next could be an auto run. So there's a lot of malware that keeps on hiding on the auto run. So for us to, or for them to just run even after the reboot, um, run services, and then also services here, some user, last user login um, information here. And that's wrap up my presentation. So any questions, don't bother with the image. So any questions, comments, thoughts, questions? Yep. Great presentation. Oh, yeah, um, I was quite interested in the tool, something to show the hidden streams. Do you have one? I'm sorry, what's that again? Hidden streams. Hidden stream? Streams. Oh, streams. Um, I didn't put that one, but I, I've watched some videos of that. I'm, I'm not particularly sure about the tool that they've been using to just get the streams. But I believe that on the GitHub profile of Eric, there's like a tool there, but it's in a command line, not in the GUI side, to detect those streams on that machine. So, yeah. I, can take note of that and I just get back to you to know the specific name of that tool. So yeah. Does anyone have an idea where there's a tool that would show hidden streams? <laughs> streams. When internal sys internals. The comment was sys internal doesn't show. Okay. Other questions? It's a, it's always great when you can turn to the audience and say, "Does anyone know of a tool that does?" And not only are there three of them, but people will argue about whether or not it works. It works right. It doesn't work well, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. It's all good. You can tell the the uh, system is evolving. Other questions, comments, thoughts, ideas. Thank okay, uh, one in the back. Oh. Like I said, I'm going to get my steps in. And I know you couldn't read the slides from back here. Quit complaining. All good. Uh, hi. Um, hi. If Eric Zimmerman gave up tomorrow, what tool set would you use? Uh, there, there could be a lot of tools that Eric Zimmerman made that made my life very easily. But for me, it's like my favorite one would be the Register Explorer. So yeah, that helps me a lot during my day-to-day -day investigations. And yeah, there's a couple of tools that I didn't mention, but yeah, he's a really great guy. And yeah. Other questions, comments, thoughts? Going once, twice, three times. Thank you very much. All right, thank you.